Hello everyone, my name is Ashfaq Ahmed and today I will teach you how to write a good research proposal or research synopsis. The importance of research proposal cannot be ignored because it is one of the main documents you will need applying a scholarship for your MPhil, MS or PhD in any university across the globe. Let's understand what is a research proposal and how will you be able to write a good research proposal in the shortest possible time. Uh, in this video actually you will learn the steps and the construction design of a research proposal and the way how quickly you can make yourself able to write a good research proposal. So first of all, let's understand what is a research proposal or a research synopsis. It is one of the requirement in higher studies that if you are interested in your MS, MPhil or PhD. So it is one of the requirement. There are also few other requirements just like writing a personal statement. Uh, one of them is research proposal or in some uh, other uh, and other documents like your passport etc. If you are planning for higher studies abroad. So what you are interested to study this is an important question it has three subsections broader field area in the field and topic for example your broader field is biochemistry your area of field within the biochemistry is let's suppose diseases and then a particular disease and then a topic in the in uh, in that disease in this video i will also give you uh, at least one or two example uh, during the construction of a research proposal so you should at least know your broader field i'm sure every one of you will know it area in the field and topic your plan that how will you study the topic and scientific justification of your topic so these three things the main idea of res of a research proposal is actually these three points your in uh, your field of interest your plan to study a topic and a scientific justification now the question comes how will you write these three points in a respect in a specific manner to call it a research proposal so first of all uh, you need to understand the basic components of a research proposal uh, if you are watching this video and if you are from a commercial perspective so i am sorry uh, this research proposal is purely for academic purpose okay so first part um, that we will call it summary or somewhere you can also name it abstract introduction problem statement or gap statement or gap analysis hypothesis or objectives methodology expected outcomes and references so these seven topics will be included in your research proposal but let me tell you among them four are four topics are very much important like the introduction problem statement hypothesis methodology yes it is also the other three they are relatively easy and they do not need uh, a specific knowledge you will understand okay 
irrespective of the topic you will cover here i will teach you how can you build or write a good research proposal just in uh, in a matter of 10 minutes so stay with me okay so we are going to talk about introduction how will you write an introduction most of the people they they make a mistake they just write something about the topic and they call it an introduction no i i'm sorry it's not uh, that way there is a specific kind of construction design to write your introduction part so we will talk about the design apparently your introduction should contain four parts one two three four you don't need to name these parts you don't need to give a subheadings to these parts but you need to follow these rules and compile your introduction it could be a one page two page three page four page it doesn't matter but it should have these four sections in the same order let's discuss the first section should be general and broader introduction of the topic it could be three to four sentence it could be uh, one paragraph or it could be two paragraph if the topic is very broad for example on this panel you you will uh, find out the examples of these four parts so the general and broader introduction of the topic for example for example you are interested in a disease you are interested in a research that is related to some disease let's say COVID. okay so you in the first part of the introduction it could be one paragraph or two or few sentences you should tell the readers about the disease how it came what pathogen it is causing and what are the symptoms what are the global impacts etc etc uh, you if you are studying a research paper you will also find the same theme of their introduction they will start from the broader aspects the second part when you finish writing this part in another paragraph one or two you have to write it should be the introduction of the actual topic discuss the role of your protein or your gene in the disease information of the structure if you are dealing protein or organization of the genes and the domains of the genes if you are dealing a gene okay so in 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 in, in the second paragraph or if you have written two paragraphs here so then in the third paragraph you have to write uh, about specific information or specific introduction of the actual topic for example you are dealing spike protein so here you wrote about corona its global impact from where it came etc etc uh, the mortality rates etc here you will start uh, writing about the s protein of corona or the s gene whatever is your research all about so you have to write the s protein of your uh, of corona and relate it with the disease you need to write what is the role of that gene or that protein in corona for example we, we are giving uh, we are discussing corona so you have to relate the, the 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 involvement the impacts the importance of that specific entity could be a gene or could be a protein to the disease okay and if there is a structure of a protein you need to discuss 
if there is a organization of their gene like the uh, the gene contains the NLS domain or uh, nuclear localization signal is for NLS or if some other domains you need to write about it okay now the third part should be a literature study of the specific topic it could be two or three paragraphs okay uh, what does it mean what other have done so far how they perform what were their results during if you don't know how to write the literature study I put three questions for you about uh, as we are discussing S protein so about the S proteins in the coronavirus you have to cover these three questions and write them in two or three paragraphs for example what other people have done so far in S protein how they performed what methodology they have used what were their results so in these three questions the first two are very much important like what have they done so far and what were their results and in point four you need to write some specific details about the actual topic with methodological brief details in one or two paragraph and normally it should be your last paragraph or last two paragraph uh, you will write details and strength of your methodologies in the light of literature study for example here you mentioned it uh, a et al and b et al and c et al work for the extra structure and they mentioned that spike protein is very important in the spread of coronavirus because uh, it attaches to the receptor so now to write this section you will connect this way uh, we are planning or we we are proposing or we have proposed this uh, that the spike protein might be sensitive to radiations might be sensitive to specific inhibitors so we plan to test it computationally in silico or in vitro or in biochemical experiment but you have to name it by which methodology you are planning to test that protein for a specific aspect and combining all these four sections will make uh, uh, an excellent introduction of your um, research proposal. The next important thing is the problem statement or gap statement. So, to write a problem statement or a gap statement, you have to cover two aspects, one and two, with example here. The first aspect could be this way. What is problem statement you actually know? Uh, you actually should know uh, about the problem statement. A problem statement describes the problem that needs to be solved or investigated providing context for the readers to understand the purpose and significance significance of this project for example you are doing you are, you are taking spike protein and you are uh, trying to test it against certain inhibitors whether in vitro or in silico or in vivo it's up to you so here what you need to address in the problem statement uh, you need to tell that why it is necessary to test these inhibitors against the COVID-19 or against the S protein to be very specific okay for example S protein is heavily involved in the progression of COVID-19, acts as a receptor to bind ACE2, a human receptor. Therefore, we believe that inhibiting S protein with some novel inhibitors will be a great idea or no one has performed before or someone has performed before but they 
tackled some other inhibitors not the one we are using because we are using them from tomato we are using them from potato we are using them i mean from organic sources okay and the the previously other people have used some other sources so this kind of justification you need to provide here the problem statement typically highlights the gap in the knowledge the existing limitations or the practical problem that needs a solution come to these three examples you will understand investigating its binding potential with a drug is required what these three examples are doing what, what these three examples are explaining it actually explained the highlights of the gap in the knowledge or the existing limitations are the practical problem that need to solution investigating for example you are investigating the binding of uh, some inhibitors with spike protein so let's say investigating its binding potential with drug is required okay so here you are highlighting the gate knowledge investigating its conformational flex flexibility is required once again you are highlighting the gate knowledge investigating se2 thermal stability is required once again you are highlighting gate knowledge and before that you had already discussed what other people had done in the introduction section here in the literature study so making your point here that what is required will not be that difficult for you if you have covered the literature study part in the introduction and how will you cover the literature study part for that you will need reading of some papers related to the uh, related to your, your your topic okay now the next thing that will comes after the gap knowledge uh, in the gap knowledge actually you 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 convince or you tell the 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 readers or you tell the researcher that this this much has done before now this this is required and i'm going to to take part in it and i will uh, investigate something like this okay so here will be your solid questions we also call it objectives or we also call it hypothesis so here will be your solid questions without any explanations all the explanation required were already covered in the gap analysis or the gap statement on the previous slide in the previous section so this section do not need any significant statement you don't need to tell the readers again that why binding analysis will be important no here you are not allowed you just need to compile your questions in a straightforward way what you want to address in this uh, research for example uh, and this section is abstractive part of the previous section in other words hypothesis actually the abstract of your problem statement section so here you talked about what are required now here you need to come with certain questions direct question like is the binding of uh, uh, to investigate the binding of spike protein with organic inhibitors with inhibitors extracting from uh, this plant to 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 investigate the computational the the conformational behavior of spike protein to investigate the thermal stability of spike protein to investigate the attachment roles of spike protein with ACE2 human receptor so let's see I made four questions for you here so it is up to you 
what questions you can make okay and the one important question most of the student they are asking me that how to drag those questions so my answer is when you when you perform the literature study you will understand because when you are reading some papers in the final sections of papers they, they normally address that we have done this 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 now this is required to be done this is required to be analyzed so actually those papers they are telling you what you need to do further okay and finally um, i have clubbed these three section on one slide because they are not so much uh, um, difficult methodology expected outcomes and references so here the first part is you will list your methodology uh, one by one for example your methodology you will use okay i, I will talk about in the context of bioinformatics for example your methodology is that you will um, you will do some molecular docking of your inhibitors with spike protein and you will use some programs for example moe or autodoc okay i will say autodoc so you will use autodoc so you have to tell here in point one like the docking strategies will be performed with autodoc software or with moe software or or, or, or some other software okay uh, and the next thing uh, if after docking you are interested for in simulation so the next you have to write that i will perform simulation with crewmax with nmd or with ember or whatever you are using third if you are performing for some other coevolutionary analysis or evolutionary analysis these these two are different things by the way so uh, you have to write the methodology like i will use this 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 program uh, to attain this specific thing and next what are your expected outcomes so what what you are expecting from your research actually you are expecting those results which you put in the hypothesis questions in the question form you are expecting probably a confirmation of changes you are expecting some binding good binding you are expecting to find a, a, a good inhibitor you are expecting to to know about the thermal stability and whatever it it all belongs to the questions you talked in the previous section and finally uh, you have to compile those references used in the introduction section uh, those references used in some other section uh, particularly in particularly in methodology you have to compile them below okay so we have covered six parts of the uh, and for research com uh, sorry for reference compilation i always suggest a good program uh, one of them is endnote and also uh, people are using mendeley and there are few more if, if you have so that is not a problem don't confuse yourself that uh, my colleague is using EndNote, so I should use EndNote. No. If you are good in Mendeley, you use Mendeley, or he or she will use EndNote. That is not a problem. But the the, the, the point I want to em emphasize, always use a program. Uh, do not go for, uh, for manual editing or manual uh, reference styles. Okay. Uh, we have covered six parts, three here, and uh, hypothesis gives it an introduction. So, come to this slide again. We have covered this part. I hope you will be able to write this, and at least you should know now that 
what you need to write for this section then for this for this 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 and this and finally you have to summarize all these things and give them a name of summary or give it a name of abstract how will you summarize just pick one or two sentences from the uh, from this section sentences I'm talking about sentences then few sentences from this section important sentences then few here and then few here and before this before this you will enter few sentences about the methodology like we will use this 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 methodology and it will construct you will see that uh, now you are having a, a perfect a perfect paragraph uh, paragraph of uh, abstract so I hope um, now you have an idea how to write a research proposal and now you are able to write a research proposal for your uh, master uh, MPhil or PhD research uh, to different professor uh, still if you have any question please ask in the comment section or if you want me to prepare a certain video uh, tutorial for you also please drop in your comment section uh, I will try my best to cover your part and uh, if you have not subscribed our channel please subscribe so that you can receive further videos and tutorials in time um, take care bye